Keep your heads up and your arms covered, beautiful family in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Here's the verse of the day for Wednesday, February 15, 2023. Let's go. And I post them every day in the community, family. And today, it's 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Jesus Christ. In all glory to our Father, that's what I've been doing, family. I've been deep in the word and deep in the streets. And I was going to put out a video yesterday, but Jesus Christ had different plans and he sent me out. And it was a miraculous day, all glory to our Father. So remember, your labor for him is not in vain. He does not forget. He does not break promises. He does not lie. He's with you everywhere you go. And I'm being filled with his Holy Spirit right now. All glory to you, Father, for the Ruach HaKodesh. Woo! And the signs and the sun, the moon and the stars are still ramping up. And they're off the charts. And he's telling us to light the path. Shine bright and prepare the way of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And we're going to go over the signs together. And I'm going to show you what he's showing me. But first, we're going to go over the word, the truth. And when you scroll down, yesterday, the verse of the day was Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. In the top comment says, we are not under the law of Moses, but the new covenant with Jesus. And I replied and said, the truth. Yeah, exactly. And Jesus Christ is the truth. Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And he's blowing me up because it's the truth. It's the word. It's Yeshua. So please, family, do not discourage people from following the truth, Jesus Christ and the Ten Commandments. And here's another reason why. Matthew chapter 5, the bread of life, the red words, verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And now we'll jump to Matthew chapter 22. Some more of the red word. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And I'll tell you right now how you can tell if somebody is preaching the gospel, the word, correctly. Because if they are, they're reading you the word, word for word, verbatim. No one can explain it better than Jesus Christ. So if you're preaching in the comments, family, preach the truth, the word. I just gave it to you. In a Christian, the definition is a follower of Jesus Christ. So please, follow Jesus Christ. Don't follow me. Don't follow people. Our words are not the bread of life. His words are the bread of life. His word is the truth. He is the word. And I just showed you one of the very last things that he said at the end of the Bible in the last chapter of his word, Revelation 22 is, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right 
to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And he also said, the commandments are not grievous. And he also said, either you're with me or against me. And I can't make anyone follow his commandments. And that's not my job. My job is to preach the truth. And I just did. Receive it. Eat it. He's the bread of life. The truth. Yeshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. And most of you know the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord God Almighty of the Most High. Our Father who art in heaven, call upon his name. Make mention that his name is exalted. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So be it. Yes, absolutely right. Amen. Thank you, Giovanna. Amen. Love God. Amen. And Jesus Christ also said in Matthew 24, 27, For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And what I'm about to show you that just happened a couple days ago, looks like he's announcing his coming. And it's right here. Lightning strikes Brazil's Christ the Redeemer statue. Pick stuns internet. The Christ the Redeemer statue is the largest depiction of Jesus in the world and stands more than 2,000 feet above Rio. And we've seen it get hit with lightning before, but not like this, family. When you scroll down, in a jaw-dropping moment, the 100-foot statue of Jesus Christ towering over Rio de Janeiro was hit by lightning. And, excuse me, the article came out a couple days ago and it says the stunning scene was captured during a flash storm which hit the coast of Brazil on Friday. The bolt of flash struck the head of the statue and turned the sculpture into a godly figure. Recordings taken on February 10th. And here it is, family. And again, the statue is a hundred feet tall. And this lightning bolt is probably 25 feet wide. I've never seen anything like it. And that's what it looks like from a distance. And this is what it looks like when you zoom in. And many of you have seen the pictures of what people think Jesus looks like with the sun behind his head. And many people have tried to copy this, like Obama. This is gigantinormous. Remember, he said, For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. These are the final warning shots, family. This picture should go viral. You should share this with everybody you know. Because the resurrection is upon us, the rapture, and he's telling us that he's coming. And he said when he comes, he'll come like lightning. And most of you know that I rarely remember my dreams. The last one I had was right after Christina escaped. And I prayed for it for three nights in a row. And he gave me this dream. And I was standing in the living room and I looked over and Christina was right next to me. Then I looked at the door and there was three gifts by the door, three presents wrapped in blue and white wrapping paper. And blue and white represents Hanukkah and it represents Israel. And I turned back to her in the dream and I said, what are these presents for? And she said, just grab them, we gotta go. So we grabbed the gifts and we went out the door. Well, this morning, right before I woke up, I had another dream and it was quick. I walked out into the living room and my front door was halfway open and my dogs were still there and everything was still there. Everything looked normal except for the front door being open. And he's been telling us that he's at the door. He told us through the prophet, Ron, Jesus rules. 
that when you see the conjunction enter the seventh house, know that I'm at the door. Well, the conjunction happened in the scale on the same day as the total blood moon eclipse on November 8th, 11 8. And we're in the uh, 118th Jubilee right now. So when that conjunction and that blood moon happened, he was telling us that he's at the door. And in my dream with Christina, she said, just grab the gifts. We got to go. And we went out the door. Then this morning, my dream, the door was opened. And you already know, the Holy Spirit told me, finding the day of the rapture is not what's important. What's important is what we do until the day of the rapture. He wants us to shine bright like the wise virgins and keep our lamps burning brightly with extra oil so we could light the way and prepare the way for the Lord. Yeshua HaMashiach, also known as Jesus Christ. He will come again and he will open the graves again. And we will, if we're still alive and remain, we will be caught up to meet the dead in the Christ and Jesus Christ in the air to be with him forever. It's going to happen, family. And I just got back from California. I was out there for three weeks. And the weather was off the charts. One day it was like 80 degrees. The next day it was like 50 degrees. And I get back here and the weather is insane. Same thing. It's sunny, then it's gloomy and dark. With major whirlwinds, stuff blowing everywhere. And Grammy just had surgery on her shoulder. They had to shave some of her bone down in her rotor cup. And if you remember... When Christina and I had went out there in 2017, she had fell when we were there and busted her other shoulder. They had to put a metal plate in and a donor bone. So please pray for her shoulders. Her sister-in-law is out there taking care of her right now. And when she leaves in a few weeks, I'm going to head back out there. But right now, I'm back in Vegas with our boys. Because family sticks together, family. And I'm not going to say any names, family. This happens to most of us. I have relatives that were saved and they stopped believing in Jesus Christ. And we knew this would happen because it's the word. It's called the great apostasy. Paul goes over it in 2 Thessalonians 2. The day of Christ will not come except there be a falling away first. A falling away from faith. And Jesus Christ knew it, and he knows it. That's why in Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, he says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. Heard what? The word. That's where our faith comes from, hearing the word. And he told us to hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. We are in the great apostasy family. The reason why people are falling away from their faith is because they're not in the word. So stay in the word and increase your faith, fam. He's coming. And keep praying for your relatives. And all glory to our Father, I have a prayer list in the description box. And if you email me your name, I will put your name on the prayer list and many of our brothers and sisters will be praying for your relatives and your friends that they're saved before the rapture. And Yeshua said, before he comes, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And he said, people will be eating and drinking and planting and building and buying and selling and getting married. Just like the times of Noah, just like the times of Lot, when he is revealed, it will be just like that, just like it is right now. Now on to the signs. And most of you know that Queen Esther saved the Jews from annihilation. And the anniversary of that is right around the corner on Purim. 
Now I'll bring you to Stellarium. It's right there. Esther, the asteroid. And right at the bottom, you can see that Esther is 622 Esther. And under that, it says right there, the asteroid is named after the biblical figure Esther. And when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance, 622, the number for the asteroid Esther, in Hebrew, it means to gather, remove. And that's what Jesus Christ is about to do. And when you go to Greek, it means to destroy, destroy utterly. And he said it will be just like the times of Lot when he is revealed, raining fire and brimstone from heaven. And when the brimstone comes down, we go up. And I've been wanting to show you this for months. These signs are gigantinormous. Right now, today, the asteroid Esther is above what looks like a well they call Cetus, that constellation Cetus. And when you zoom in, you can see that Jupiter is right above Esther to the right. And Venus is right above Jupiter to the right. And when you zoom in, there's another queen from history right there, Queen Cleopatra. And if you don't know about Queen Cleopatra, do some research, family. And when you zoom in more, there's a false god named Juno that was labeled a queen also. And right between Queen Esther and Queen Cleopatra is the asteroid Thalia. And the Bible meaning for Thalia is dew from heaven. And when you go through the days and you head towards Purim, March 6th and 7th, you could see that Venus is gaining on Jupiter. And right there on March 1st, they're lined up perfectly. And Cleopatra and Esther, both these queens, in history, are lined up perfectly. And as you move forward to Purim, they're lined up even more. And when you zoom in, Thalia and Juno are both right there. And Nemesis, right above Thalia. The wandering stars, they call planets, are lined up. The queens are lined up. And Doris is right there, too. And Doris means gift. And I'll take you to the sun. Because Jesus Christ said the signs will be in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And the sun is in what they call Aquarius. The constellation they call Aquarius. Lined up with the wandering stars, Mercury and Saturn. On Purim. And that constellation looks like a water bearer. And when you go to Mark chapter 14, verse 13... Jesus sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And this was right before he was crucified, right before Passover family. Now we'll go to the moon. And on Purim, the moon is right between what they call Leo, the lion, and Virgo, the woman. And when you go a day ahead, March 8th, the moon goes into the woman. And when you go another day ahead to the ninth, the moon is in the woman's stomach, right next to Spica, the wheat. And on that day, it's the Obama dinner. Thursday, March 9th, 2023, at the Grand Wayne, 120 Jefferson Boulevard. And on that day, it'll be 1,260 days since they recognized Islam in a Jewish temple, in the Temple Mount. And they called it Noah's Covenant. On 927, like Daniel 927. And it was a covenant with many, 70 nations. And when you go 30 days ahead, if we're still here, it lands on Nissan 17. Resurrection Day will be the 1290 days since Noah's covenant with many when they recognized Islam as God in the temple. No one knows the day or hour but the Father only. But he's showing us that the day is approaching. 
And he's probably telling you to shine bright and prepare the way for the Lord. The day of the Lord is at hand. And there's a lot of information out there saying that during the Jubilee, the door to heaven is open. And remember, the total blood moon eclipse was on 11-8. And we're in the 118th Jubilee. It's a match. And before I started the video, I prayed and asked God to show me something to share with you in his word. And I opened to Acts chapter 18, verse 9. The red words. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. So now's the time to be bold, family, and speak up and spread the gospel. And remember my dream. I woke up this morning from a dream and our front door was half opened. And instantly I was reminded of Revelation 4.1. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show you these things which must be hereafter. That's the rapture. And that day is approaching. So shine bright, family. And let no man take your crown. It's about to go down.